Hi there, Alex Long here, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids here in northern Missouri. Uh, today we're standing in a soybean field just outside of Agency, Missouri, which is up in the northwest corner of our trade territory. And I want to talk about soybean management decisions, uh, more focused on the later stages of soybean growth. Um, as you can see, this field of soybeans I'm standing in uh, is pretty far along. You know, they're pretty much thigh high on me and I'm not a short guy. So um, these beans were planted fairly early. I want to say around April 20th. Um, and I, I've been growth staging them. And these are right on that borderline between R2 and R3. I'll get into the importance of that later, but I just want to make mention of that. Um, but what I wanted to focus on is fungicide and insecticide on soybeans. So I know there's a lot of talk going on about making these applications, especially this time of year, because we are getting into those reproductive stages and guys really just want to protect their plants. But there's some, there's some good information through PFR Proven that, uh, that can kind of guide you on your way through making those applications. So I just want to start off on when that application should be made. And through all the studies we've done with PFR, you know, at all the different sites, we found that R3 is the crucial timing to make a fungicide and or insecticide application. Um, there's some different reasons for that. You know, that's the very beginning of pod development. So you want to protect the plant as much as you can right at that point um, and some things like that. But the important thing to note is why that's so important because it directly affects your pocketbook at the end of the year. So if you miss that timing, that R3 timing on either side of it, you know, you hit R2 or R4, you're actually going to leave some money on the table. And through our studies, we found that it's about 10 or $11 is what it increases your break even point just by missing uh, the growth stage window. So, you know, if you're, if you're not spraying your own beans, um, if you have somebody else spray them and they say, hey, I'm in your area spraying some fungicide and insecticide on beans, you want me to hit your field, your first question should hopefully be, well, what stage are they? Because that's going to be the most determining factor on whether it's going to be a profitable trip through the field or not. Um, so I want to get into how to stage your soybeans. You know, we talk about growth stages a lot, but some of you may not know what that actually means. So when you're talking about the reproductive stages of soybeans, it all goes off of the flowering activity for the most part. So when you look at R1, R1 is where you have flowers or multiple flowers anywhere on the plant. Um, that indicates the first stage of reproduction, so R1. Um, R2 is where you have full flowers on the whole plant. So looking at all the nodes, all the, all the growth points where the petiole is attached to the stem, that's where you see R2 when you have a flower at all of those. Now R3 is where you start focusing on the upper part of the plant, you know, the, the newest part of the plant. So when you look at the top four nodes, the four uppermost nodes of a soybean plant, like this one here, you're talking basically from here up, so you can see, kind of get a visual of what that looks like. You're looking for a pod that is either 3 16ths to a quarter inch long on those four uppermost nodes. So you can see on this plant here, there are these pods. So this is a qualifier, but it is on that fourth node. So I want to say it's borderline between R2 or R3. Um, by the end of the week, these will absolutely be full R3. Um, and as you can see, that's why you focus on the uppermost part of the plant because on the bottom, it's actually R4. You know, you are actually have almost full pod development at this point. So that's why it's important to really pay attention to where you're seeing these things on the plant. Um, you know, and soybeans are indeterminate, so they're going to keep flowering and keep putting on pods well into their future. But at this point, these beans are at R2, R3. So this is the, the stage at where you want to be making those, those application determinations or when you want to make those applications. Now, there is a lot of talk about products, you know, and through our research at PFR, there's not really a big dependence on what product you choose to use. We have a few of them on our PFR proven poster and all three of them are right at that four bushel return on yield. Um, so they're right at four bushel and then insecticide on the same note is about the same. You know, we, in our PFR proven poster, it shows a good example of just a common pyrethroid and you're gonna see a similar return there, you know, that three to four bushel range. Um, Generally, I want to make the combination application, especially for how cheap, relatively cheap those products are. Um, you're going to be better off mixing the two than doing one or the other. In my experience, I've seen insecticide actually work a little bit better alone than, than fungicide, but that's very subjective to the field. Um, when you're out here scouting and you're making these decisions, so I said, you know, you want to make the application R3. And I guess I should have noted that that's with the caveat that there isn't a disease problem out here to begin with. So when you're scouting these fields, you want to look and see what kind of diseases you have present. You know, I haven't seen much in this field at all, but if you have frog eye leaf spot and it's starting fairly early, early in the growth season, um, you want to get a management on that as soon as possible. So even if you're outside of that R3, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and spray it to get control of that because it can really it can really affect uh, leaf area or usable leaf area when you go to talking about pod fill and things like that. 
Um, something that's pretty common <coughs> in soybean fields of this growth stage is going to be septoria brown spot. You know, it's what you see in the lower canopy. It's what causes these these yellowing leaves. Um, you know, it, it's it's a direct effect of soil splash. You know, there's a, a bacterium in the soil splashes up on the leaf and it causes this. You know, it can lead to defoliation. Generally, it's not a big yield limiting factor, um, and it's pretty difficult if not impossible to control with fungicides and and I think that comes down to a coverage issue because like I said it is on the bottom of the canopy um, on the insecticide side the things you'll be looking for like this time of year in this area Japanese beetles are everywhere um, there's a cornfield off to my left I walked and they're feeding on the silks pretty bad and they're starting to move into the soybeans and as you can see from this leaf they've actually there is quite a bit of feeding going on there but I want to talk about thresholds a little bit so when you look at the reproductive stages of soybeans, your Japanese beetle feeding threshold is going to be about 20% defoliation during reproduction. Um, that's a pretty good amount of your leaf area gone. You're talking about a fifth of the leaf area gone. Um, these plants here, for the most part, I'm going to say are in that 10 to 15%, so they're right borderline. Um, and in that case, when these thresholds were made, insecticides were a lot more expensive than they are today. and um, I think we can ease up on the thresholds a little bit. You know, there's a lot of guys that they see Japanese beetles, they spray them. Um, I can't say speak for or against that. You know, that's a that's a management preference that you make. Um, I lean more towards getting rid of them because I don't want any leaf feeding at all. I want to keep my soybeans as healthy as possible. But uh, but so it's a good idea just to scout your fields, get out here, see what's going on, and help make these management decisions. Um, like I said, our PFR Proven and PFR in general is a great resource when you're looking at different products and things like that. But it's a very good way to get a handle on what kind of expectation you can have for the yield you'll achieve. So that's today's agronomy update. I hope you learned something and happy scouting.